In this video, I'll explain why so many shower pans fail and why so many pros do it wrong. Now you've probably seen my video, how to make a shower pan, and you've also probably watched other videos that might give you some conflicting information. So this video is intended to help clear up any of the confusion from all of the information and some of the false information out there. And I'll do this by sticking to the facts like building codes and product instructions. I also spoke with one of the largest manufacturers of shower pan liners in preparation for this video. Comment below if you have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit the like button if this video helps you. Now let's get started. Now a shower pan liner basically has two jobs. The first is just to catch the water that comes out of the shower head and keep it in the shower so that it doesn't leak in the house. And this is the job of the shower pan liner. For the most part, people tend to get this right. The second is to take that water and direct it towards the drain so that it can get out. And this is where people tend to make mistakes. The number one cause for shower pan failure is not water leaking out of the shower, but actually being trapped in. And when this happens, you have a snowball effect of damage that can go on for years before it's even detected. It's important to understand that the shower pans that use mortar and liners, they're engineered to work a very specific way and a very unique way. And the same goes for other methods like the bonded sheet membranes or, or hot mopping or copper or lead pans. Each of these methods, you know, has pros and cons. It's common for contractors to be partial to the method they use or probably overly critical of the other ones. But the reality is that they all work and they also can all fail if they're done wrong. But the key is they, they work differently. When you start blending these methods, that's when you're going to risk getting problems. Here's an example. Membrane systems like Curdy, they apply a waterproofing sheet on top of the pan. So I see a lot of people that are installing mortar and liner pans, and they're adding this paintable waterproofing like Red Guard to the pan itself. And while it may seem like a good idea to, you know, to keep the water out of the pan, you have to remember that they, they function the way they do by design. And if you modify that design, you can cause problems. In this case, if you coat all or most of the pan, you might see possible tile adhesion problems, moisture being trapped between the grout and the thin set for too long, and that can cause material failure. Or you might even get water in the pan where your waterproofing failed or wasn't applied right. And now it's gonna stay a lot longer than it should because the evaporation that's part of the process has been compromised by you cutting off the airflow with your waterproofing. So let's talk about how mortar and liner pans are designed to work. Now the majority of the water is going to find its way into the top of the drain and go where it should. And then a small amount is going to get soaked in. Now this small amount of water is now dependent on two things if there's any chance it's going to get out before it causes damage. Now if you have a pre-slope under your liner, it's going to find its way to the weep holes where hopefully someone used gravel when they did the mortar pan and they're not clogged. If they are, that water is trapped. It's a small amount, but it's not going anywhere. And if you shower every day, it adds up. You may have seen videos where installers attempt to disprove the need or the effectiveness of a pre-slope or the function of weep holes. Well, they're wrong, and I'll talk about that more in a little bit. Now, I've been working in residential construction for about 20 years, and it almost seems like more people do it wrong than they do it right. But I can see how this happens. In construction, almost everything you learn is from someone else, somebody that's been doing it longer. Installing a pre-slope, it's not like it's hard, but it does add an entire day to the, the shower building process just due to the drying time. And skipping that step may be just a little too easy because most building inspectors don't even check for it. Some people might be surprised how vague building codes can be. In my area, there's actually no inspection for a shower pan at all. The only time the plumbing inspector is in the shower is to maybe look at the rough-in plumbing. In areas where there is some level of inspection, you know, during the process of the, the shower pan construction, the focus is on the liner. They'll require a flood test, you know, just to make sure that it doesn't leak. Or they'll leave it up to the contractor to complete a form saying that they did it. So you can see how easy it is, you know, for contractors to get away with it. I don't think that most people are doing this intentionally. Now I've seen some videos by some, you know, relatively popular 
DIY YouTubers doing these garage experiments, trying to disprove the need for, for following the directions. Now, the theory behind this no pre-slope movement is that pre-slopes aren't necessary because mortar is porous. And there's this thing called capillary action that makes the pre-slope useless because the water can't flow towards the drain because capillary action is not affected by gravity. Well, this is wrong. Capillary action is affected by gravity, and at a certain level of saturation, gravity becomes stronger. And this happens well before the total saturation that you see when pans fail. You know, capillary action is actually a part of what makes the mortar pans work. It keeps the water from pulling up, spreading it out so it evaporates easier because it has more contact with air. It's almost always safer to trust the instructions and the scientific testing behind them. The testing and development of a product by a billion dollar company cannot be disproven by one garage experiment. When you buy an OD brand liner, this is what it comes with. It's clearly showing you the pre-slope and the gravel. And then there's this, one of the more controversial parts of the install. The backer board is in the pan and not over it. You may or may not have heard about this, but it seems that the reaction and the agreed upon fix to all of these shower pan failures is to get the backer board out of the mortar and to leave a gap. You know, while it's true that once your shower pan fails and becomes saturated, moisture will wick up backer board because it has nowhere else to go, resulting in moisture damage to not only the backer board, but to the wood framing as well. So when contractors are demoing failed showers and finding this, the solution that seems to be gaining the most traction is to not put the backer board in the pan at all. And it is true, if you keep the backer board out of the mortar and the shower pan fails, you will most likely keep all of the, the nastiness in the pan so that you only have to tear out the pan and replace it. You know, it's, it's hard to be against that. I just wish the focus would be on correcting the cause of the failure and not just a partial reduction of damage. A pan that is working because it was installed correctly will never become wet enough to saturate backer board. It was designed to function this way. But I don't blame anyone for being nervous about, you know, putting the backer board in the mortar. And I don't think there's anything wrong with leaving a small gap. The only negative that I can think um, is it's going to be more difficult. Now, if you choose to leave a gap, just make sure that you have the liner, you know, supported so you can properly pack the mortar at the edges. And if you're using a metal trowel, just be really careful not to puncture the liner when you're working the mortar. Other than installing it correctly, there's one more thing that you need to do to ensure that your shower pan lasts. It needs regular maintenance. The shower pan is designed to handle small amounts of moisture getting in, so cracked or unsealed grout can allow too much and give it the opportunity for mold and mildew growth. All inside corners need grout caulk, not grout. This is another thing that I see people skip a lot. Regular grout will crack in these areas, allowing moisture in. The grout in a shower should be sealed at least once a year. If the grout looks wet as soon as water hits it, it probably needs sealer. You can use an impregnator sealer for most tiles and grout. Just follow the instructions and apply more than one coat. 